Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to program a drone to track a face. We will do this using OpenCV and apply a PID controller to have smooth movements. So let's get started. So in the previous part, we started off by importing our libraries and we had two different files, which was first, the first one was face tracking and then the second one was utilities. Here, the utilities is for all the functions, the supporting functions that we will need. And inside that, we have imported our two libraries, which are DJI Telopi and we have CV2, which is OpenCV. And then in our main script, we wrote a while loop where uh, we got the image from our drone and then based on whatever size we requested for. So I don't recommend a large size. So I would say 360 by 240 should be fine. If you want bigger than that, you can go for 480 by 360. But I would not recommend going above that. Anyways, so the first thing you have to do is you have to initialize your drone. And once you have initialized it, you can request for the frame. And both of these functions we wrote here. So we have the initialization and then we have the get frame uh, function over here as well. So now we are going to move further and we are going to find the face in this image. So to find the face, we are going to use the Viola Jones method, uh, which will use a hard cascade file and it will detect the faces for us. So we have to first import that file. So let's go ahead and do that. So to import the image, you can actually drag and drop. So let me show you that. So here I have my folder and here is our hard cascade file. So this will be available on the website. This is provided by OpenCV. So you can go ahead and download from OpenCV's website or I will supply a link to that on my website as well. So you can drag this here and you can drag it in the Tello face tracking and you can hit OK. So now you can see that we have our hard cascade frontal face default. So how can we use this? So we, we are in utilities and we are going to create a new function. So we will call this find face and all we need is an image. So we are going to write here that our face cascade cascade is equals to cv2 dot cascade classifier and we are going to write inside the the har we have to write the whole name so what you can do is you can go actually it's not showing so you can right click here you can go in show in explorer you can rename this and copy all of this and then you can just simply paste it here so then we are going to write that we want an gray image so image gray is equals to cv2 dot cvt color and we want to change our image to cv2 dot uh, what do you call it color underscore bgr to gray so we are converting it into gray image and then we will find the faces on it. So faces is equals to face uh, cascade dot multi detect multi class um, multi scale. And then we will write image gray and then we have to define the parameter. So the parameter is the scale factor and the minimum neighbors. For now, we are going to use 1.2 and 4. If you find that they are not working for you, you can change these values as well. And of course, you can read about these more in details in one of the other videos, or you can go to their documentation as well. So we're not going to go into that much detail here. So once we get this, the second step would be to find all the faces and draw them. This will be, this will make it easier for us to see what is going on. So we will write here for X, Y, and then width and height in faces to draw the rectangle we are going to write cv2 dot rectangle and then we will write that we want to draw it on this image 
and then we have the x and y which is our starting position then we have the x plus um, what do you call width and then we have the y plus height and then we are going to give it a color which color to choose okay let's do red so we will do 255 and then we will give it a thickness of 2 so that should be good and then we can return this image and we can call this function over here so this is step number two so we will write here step number two and then we have image is equals to uh, what was the name of the function find face so find face image so we will write this and let's run it so you have to make sure it's connected let me turn it on and we will see so if we run it now and there we have our image and you can see the face is not really shown let me move the image so that we can see the face and there we have it so now you can see that the face is being detected I will move it a little bit around and you can see that if it detects it properly or not So as you can see the detection is not bad at all and it's totally usable so we are going to go ahead and now we will find the coordinates of our faces so that we can uh, send it to our PID controller. Now the thing is that right now we are only detecting one face but what if there are multiple faces so it should not track all those faces right. So the idea is that the face that is closest to the camera should be the one that should be detected the one that is far away somebody is passing by uh, at your back it should not detect them and it should not try to follow them it should try to follow you if you are the one in front of the camera so this is what we are going to do so to do that what we will do is we will first create a list we will create a list where we will store the center point of our all faces all the faces we have detected we will store their x and y uh, cx and cy which is basically your center x and center y we don't want to use the uh, x or y okay so we will write here my face my face list center is equals to empty and then my face again face list um, area is equals to empty so we are also going to store the area so that we can find which one is the closest uh, the closest one will be the largest one so when we are looping through our faces we will find the CX which is the center X so that will be X plus width divided by 2 so this is what we will uh, get and then we will write CY and we will write y plus height divided by 2 and then we are going to write that our area is equals to width multiplied by height so this is all the information we need and then we are going to append the area so we will append and we will write area and then we will write face c and then uh, face list c dot append and we are going to write that we want to append CX and CY. So once that is done, then we have the list of all the faces. Right now it will be one, but let's say we have three, four, five, or however many. So once we have that, we are going to first check that if our face is actually present or not, if any of the faces is present or not because we cannot use some operations if the list is empty so we have to check if length of our my face list area let's say is not equals to zero then we are going to uh, do the next steps 
So the next step is basically finding the index of the largest uh, area, which will mean that this is the closest face to your uh, drone. So that's why we have to find that um, index. So that index will be I is equals to my face uh, list area dot index. And we have to find the index at the maximum position of our area list, right? So this is how you can write it. And then you can use this to actually return your image and your information of the face. So we are going to return. So actually we are going to, if this happens, we are going to return the image and then we are going to return my face list C at index I and then we are going to return my face list area at index I. So the idea is that we don't want to return all the faces. We only want to return the face that we want to track. So the information of the uh, X and Y, the center X and Y, this is what we are returning of the biggest face of the, or of the closest face and then the area of that closest face. So these are the two things that we are returning. And then if, if that is not the case, we will write else. And in that case, we will return our image and then we will return it as zero, zero, and then zero. So later on, we will check if it's zero, then we will not really move the drone. And if it's not zero, then we will move the drone to whatever angle required. So this is how we can do that. And we will remove this return. And now what we can do is we can go back and we can write here that this is basically the information that we are getting. So we can write here, for example, info. And uh, what we can do is we can print info and uh, let's say we want to print the first element and the first element of that. So this will give us the W, or not, not the W, the X value of our center point. So it will give us, where is it? CX, right? Because this is the first element. This is the first element. And inside that we have CX and CY. So we are getting the CX so that we can track the CX. So we are going to print this and see how it uh, performs. So just keep looking at the bottom for this value. I will connect it again and let's try it out. So as you can see, if we move towards the right, we are getting higher values. And as we move towards the left, we are getting lower values. This means that our information that we are getting is correct. And now we can send this to our tracking function. So this is it for today's video. In the next part, we are going to use this information to actually track our face using a PID controller so that we have smooth movements. So stay tuned for that and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.